Hey, everybody. We are back. I think I've actually done Bloody Palace on this with Bury the Light actually is the song. Can't do it right now, I'll have to quit the game. Do it. Oh yeah, I got past um I didn't. Yeah, that didn't really matter. All right, so let's do this for a couple of hours. Today's flavor is a stranger I remain. Who knows though, depending on how it goes, I might switch that track out. Does it say something about like the quality of Metal Gear Rising soundtrack that I'm choosing? That over the actual soundtrack of the NT5. We try again. Mm. Get into the groove of it. Could have been cool, but I ruined it. Darn. Everything further and further, they're coming clear to me. If I could replicate that, that would be. A That wasn't bad. Now they got that off a lot quicker than they normally do. I love the double up cut for that. It's basically a Shinsho Yukon. It's amazing. Mm. 
Love it. Double charge. One into two. Absolutely awesome. There's something about battle songs with tricks. Four seconds. Probably shouldn't be allowed to use those as much as you can. How you doing, Flame? Easy trying to run any game. Yeah, I mean we've got like each so each weapon has its own super move. The most well known of which being the Yamato's Judgment Cut End. Uh, but the same input does it for Beowulf and Mirage Edge. And Judgment Cut End, fantastic, very flashy, really nice. Beowulf's just a big AoE. It's really good. Alright, I'll tell you what, Flame. We'll take a look at it. Oh, my concentration has to be higher. I always forget about the concentration requirement. There you go. Is that what you were after? The attack I'm thinking of from... Uh, DMC4 is done with the Yamato in a cutscene. Yeah, I'm just tired. Just ever shifted schedule for him. I was hoping to do like two streams a day. Like one after I got home before I eat and then one after I eat. And that's just not worked out. I was gonna do Sekiro and Hades and it's just it's not happening.
that last little bit of health on those guys always takes longer than I expect it to. Yeah, I'm thinking I might just put Hades and Sekiro on pause until after May. Do some other stuff that don't matter as much. Only get into a normal enemy. What is that one? Angelo Cavalier. Hey, is that legendary stream of Fox Sound Cat? How you doing, Cat? I just played a Virgil right now. I think after this run, though, we'll go with Dante for a bit. took off all the point rewards that redeem games. Heal of Castlevania. I can do this. Yeah, nobody is like the most frustrating regular enemies in Devil May Cry 1. If it wasn't for the fact that Shadow was one of these familiars, I would have been like, they should have brought back Shadows. Ugh. I see that fucking lips. I think those guys are like probably my most hated enemy in this game and it's almost entirely because they will teleport out of combos
problem you run into there is like how much is too much like how many times is too many times to bring in an impact all right now goliath with very little health Yeah, I remember the um okay there. I remember the assaults in the frost blitz. I vaguely remember, were they in four? No, yeah, you're right, because it was always a question like how the fuck is Dante supposed to deal with that? Yeah, because Nero, it was one of the problems Devil May Cry 4 had. It was clearly built for Nero. And the Devil Bringer was great for almost everything. And then you threw those enemies at Dante, and Dante didn't have a way of dealing with a lot of them. Yeah, we'll do this. Go back in a dump today. The frustrating thing about these Metal Gear Rising tracks is they override everything. So you're either using a Devil Trigger with the track over it and with whatever you've replaced it with, or you're hearing nothing, which is frustrating. Because like the other ones I've got. Like, um, Dynamic Devils Never Cry. That just replaces Subhuman and nothing else. Eat those berry delights. Yeah, I've never really been um, a royal guard person. I spent tra I spent time learning to work here, but ultimately, I find tricks the more appealing. I main Trickster and Swordmaster interchangeably. I still haven't found a good use for Gunslinger. Every now and then I'll bust out Dual Kalina Ran. And do that.
I feel like if even if you're showing off, like Vital Guard's more interesting. Or Trickster if you get like very specific tricks at timing. There's also the thing, I don't think Dante's guns are all that useful in this one. Like, every now and then I'll switch to, like, the Coyote. Specifically for the sensors. Beyond that, nothing does the damage I would need it to do to actually make any of it worthwhile. I'd be happy enough to just replace the weapon switch button with a reverse... The gun switch button with a reverse devil arm switch button. Same as Virgil has. Rev it up. Hell May Cry 1 did have the um, grenade launcher. But Don't Make Cry 1's guns were much more powerful in comparison with, like, 3 and onwards. Yeah, the trick for the Sin Scissors to kill them instantly is to jump over them and bop them in the head with a shotgun. Uh, the trick with Don't Make Cry 1 with a grenade launcher would be you'd fire it and then, like, move. Move slightly. Because it'd reset the whole thing, so you could fire the grenade gun way faster than you're supposed to, and it would do, like, actually good damage. Like, the guns... The guns were overpowered in Del May Cry 2, but they were pretty powerful in Del May Cry 1. Even if you didn't one-shot them, like, they never, even in, like, the later releases, they never took out the reset trick for the grenade launcher, so you can just rapid-fire them. Virgil is just a lot of fun to play as in this game, though. Oh, I had it already installed. I took a quick look at the patch. Are those goggles always there? Have physics on them. Yeah, I already had it installed because I was trying to get it running again. And I just installed the patch.
Oh. Never noticed them. I'm very disappointed in your plan. That's in my neck. I don't know the season or what is the reason I'm standing here holding my blade. I love Blood Omen 2. It's probably my favorite. A lot of that probably has to do with nostalgia, but also, like, the game doesn't get as. We, we get into the whole thing, and, like, Blood Omen 1 has aged the best of the entire series. I think Soul Reaver's probably aged the worst. See, I played them in order Blood Omen, Soul Reaver, Blood Omen 2, Defiant Soul Reaver 2. Because Soul Reaver 2 was only on PS2, and I didn't have a PS2 until later. That's, that's a weird thing to think for. Later. Like, we, we get into it, like, Blood Omen 1's probably aged the best. But it's a game that requires very specific taste. And patience. It's an old, top-down action RPG. Soul Reaver has probably aged the worst. At the time, it was very impressive. Uh, the streaming from the disc, no loading times past the initial loading time. But... I mean, the big problem is probably just that it's a PS1 game. A lot of it's empty. It is technically a big open world, but it's a big open world in the same sense like Metroid Prime is a big open world, except a lot of it is empty. It's pathways between areas, less interconnected than, say, Metroid Prime, but a lot of those pathways are just empty. The impact of Soul Reaver's story is that Raziel died and chased Kane into the time stream. Hmm. Soul Reaver 2. Soul Reaver 2 is an improvement and it makes the game more linear, which is absolutely a better, better thing. But it also really starts to focus on combat. And I don't find the puzzles in Soul Reaver 2 all that engaging. Same for Defiance. I find the puzzles, for the most part, a... kind of a chore. Probably because of the scale of them, in a lot of the, a lot of the time. And then Defiance is arguably... If you want to take them as they came out, Defiance is probably the worst of them. And it's in Yannis' retreat, and all of the goddamn forges. But there's, al there's also a thing of, like, the game would stop you so often, especially approaching late game, to just lock you into a small area for combat. Which wasn't fun, and then Defiance would do the same thing. And Defiance's combat was better. They added, like, a whole set of combos to it. 
different mechanics, but it still wasn't particularly good. And the fixed camera angles of Defiance make a lot of it a chore. I remember having problems with a lot of areas trying to figure out where I'm supposed to be going. Because of that kind of thing. Blood Omen 2, like, a lot of it may be nostalgia. But, like, I like the city setting. Oh, the platforming in Defiance is absolutely a nightmare. I like the steampunk city setting. It was probably the first time I played a game that was steampunk, in any sense. Um, just the city setting in general, I really love. I do think the game gets weaker when you leave the city. The combat isn't a bad thing. It's not great. It's simple enough, but with enough... It's simple enough, it's fast enough... That it's never... It never outstays its welcome until late game. But by late game, you've also got the thing of like, here's a power that will just outright kill regular enemies. Sure, you've got to do a lot of blocking to build it up, but by this point, enemies... The whole thing is, oh yeah, the first few enemies you will encounter will have three hit combos. You block every hit, and then you hit them. By the end of the game, they have like seven hits. And each hit... Like, builds up your rage meter, so within like two combos, you can just immediately kill the enemy with, the, with Immolite. I found the smaller scale of the story to be somewhat engaging, although they never explained how Vorador was still alive. Apparently Defiance was supposed to explain that, and it didn't. Um... The puzzles in Blood Omen 2 are also a smaller scale. There's a, a fair bit of block pushing and valve turning, but they're all fairly small scale, which really helps, as opposed to, like, Soul Reaver 2 run all over this huge area to solve all of it. And, like, part of it probably is nostalgia, but Blood Omen 2 is undeniably my favourite. The scope of Blood Omen 1 definitely makes it one of the more interesting to play. You're absolutely right about the collision damage, though. music stop because it's not a perfect dynamic mod pretty interesting for the five minutes where you play as a weird <laughs> no mug of ale for a weary traveler from distant Corhagen I can reward you well for my have noble blood I stay open for no man in these dark times. Things come with a night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. Cold of heart and soul. 
forced to the road and the long, bitter night. I've regularly said, like, people bring up Metal Gear Solid as, like, the early champion of good voice acting games. And I'm like, nah, Blood Omen. But there's also the thing, like, the fact that Blood Omen has, like, maybe six voice actors across so many characters. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, these are fantastic voice actors with very distinctive voices and not a whole lot of range. It's like, hey, let's... Yeah, let's cast Tony J as Tony J, and also as somebody who is definitely not Tony J. The voices are too distinctive for it. It's the similar kind of thing I've said before about Jennifer Hale. Jennifer Hale is absolutely a fantastic voice actress, and every time she plays a character, you know that character is going to be really well acted. But also, you can always tell when a character is played by Jennifer Hale. You fucking mind. Just do the thing. Richard Doyle as Morbius is so good. And it's one of those things of like... Going beyond just how good the quality of the voice acting was for the big characters that they were voicing. It's great that for every game they brought those voice actors back. The only exception is when Mortanius reappears in Defiance. He's voiced by somebody else. But that's because they cast Tony J as the Elder God at that point. And if it was just like, oh yeah, Mortanius is still voiced by Tony J doing Tony J's voice. It would have been very uh, off putting. Whenever Tony J plays a character that just has to have sheer malice in their voice. Like, the Elder God in Soul Reaver is good, but he's also kind... He's, he's a very supportive character in Soul Reaver. He's mostly just a guy. But, like, in Soul Reaver 2 and Defiance, where he is outright an enemy, the malice of the voice is just beautiful. This, the, behind, the outtakes, the behind the scenes stuff, the voice recording sessions in both Soul Reaver 2 and Defiance are golden. Absolutely love them. It's a shame they don't show off like more of the voice actors. There's n there are no... Like, none of the scenes are of Anna Gunn as Ariel. And I'm curious like how those scenes would have gone. Like How much messing around there was with those.
people like Richard Doyle, Sam Tempen, Michael Bell, Tony J. I imagine it wouldn't have been too difficult to get a lot of them back. Because a lot of them are like dedicated voice actors. Michael Bell has been a like, been a voice actor for decades at that point. Tony J had done a lot of stuff. Like recognizable actors, but never huge actors. So I imagine it wasn't difficult to get them back. I think the big surprise of it all would be, like, you, you go through the games, and, like, from Blood Omen to Soul Reaver, the important voice to get back is Simon Sampleman as Kane, the connecting thread. It's probably largely a coincidence that Tony J was also Mortanius. His casting as the Elder God just made sense. Um, Michael Bell as Raziel was a, a new addition as a major character. But there's the one other, the one other connecting thread that they needed. And that was like Richard Doyle. Bring Richard Doyle back for like one line. Because you need to be able to recognize that voice. Otherwise, the cliffhanger ending for Blood, for Soul Reaver, doesn't matter. Doesn't make sense. And it's just gonna be like, what? But bringing back Richard Doyle as Mobius? Paul Luca, that's a very good point. I always forget Vorida also had the same one. I think they got really fortunate with like, just very high quality actors that were always willing to return, always down for it, who just enjoyed doing it. Like, some, some of those behind-the-scenes stuff, though. There's, like, one scene that Kane and the Elder God have together, and it's the, like, the very end of Defiance. I think, like, partly, a big part of what helped as well, you can see in the behind-the-scenes stuff, they recorded conversations with the actors together. So it's like, Raziel and Kane are talking, Sam and Sebman and Michael Bell are in the booth together doing it. And that kind of thing always shows, always ends up with a better performance from both actors. And so you get to the final one, and it's Sam and Sebman and Tony J. And, like, the behind the scenes of that is just absolutely fantastic. We're probably, like, we, we do them. We do the games, and we are absolutely going to be taking a look at those behind the scenes. Because they're fun. They are so fun.
<sighs> as they're bringing everyone back. They brought Anna Gunn back as Ariel as well. And she doesn't play a large part again, but she still she serves the same role she did in Blood Home, and she's the guide if you get lost. Janos Audrin, played by like noted veteran. Uh, Rene... I never know how to pronounce his last name. Oba... Oba Jornis? I... Honestly, I don't even remember how it's spelled, so I can't even think how to pronounce it. He played Odo in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He was he was a great addition. I think it really does help. Like all these career actors, it helps sell the gravity and gravitas, and just the sense of scope and idea that the games have, even from Blood Omen. Because, like, Blood Omen is a world. Rich Dial does such a good job in voicing Mobius as a character you will absolutely despise in every game he's in. Like, you finally get to Defiance and you get his true comeuppance, and it is so goddamn satisfying. And, like, it always has to be said with a character like that. It's not as easy to make a character that you will just despise as people think it is. And it's even harder to voice a character people will despise. Or, like, play a character. Because a, a weaker actor will just make that character annoying. Like a good actor will make them like just unlikable, and it's it's an understated talent. Like um, Jack Gleason in Game of Thrones is Joffrey, or Lena Hiddy is Cersei in Game of Thrones. Like just outright despicable characters that you are absolutely gonna hate. And they do such a good job in playing them. Oh yeah, Flame, you didn't get to see this last time, so uh here's a special treat for you. So I wasn't lying to you last time when I said that that Devil Trigger mod doesn't have Margin Devil Trigger. It's actually a separate mod. And I had the Margin Devil Trigger mod before I had the, um, the regular Devil May Cry 2 Devil Trigger mod. I think I'm out of practice with Dante. Yeah, Raziel throughout the series is the character that is being used who doesn't know anything. And every time he makes a choice, it's a choice that he's been led to. Uh, yeah, let's... I'm going to put this on, just in case I want to use it. But otherwise, let's use Bury the Light.
How Kane fought William in Blood Omen broke. The two Reavers. There's so much to go into that we'll definitely have to get into as we go. Like the convergence of the Reavers creating the possibility of a paradox, which is absolutely a retcon. But it's a fantastic retcon. Well, Raziel makes a lot of choices for himself. The problem is they're choices that other people have set up to benefit them. Uh, let's turn off 2B. Like, ultimately, in Soul Reaver 2, the one choice that matters is Kane's choice at the end of the game. History of pause a paradox indeed. Devil may cry. I don't know if it's so much what the Hilden were expecting. The problem with the Hilden, especially in Defiance, like the Hilden itself is like the big threat that cannot be released. But they're ultimately just dealt with in Blood Omen 2. So they don't really end up mattering. Yeah, the, the Hilden were the true villains behind Blood Omen 1, and then they're the villains of Blood Omen 2, and they're the behind the scenes villains of Defiance. But ultimately, a lot of what they do doesn't matter because they're taking care of in Blood Omen 2, which is, for the most part, a side story. That's a horrible thing to say, Clint, you're banned. This is supposed to be his blue costume. Yeah, the Elder God's the true villain. The Hilden ultimately are just another pawn in the Elder God's schemes. It'll be fun to get back like to get into that. If that's not gonna work, I'll just play i I'll play a different mod. Yes, the octopus. Ultimately, though, this is something to go into more in depth when we do the legacy like, as it comes up. A bit of a similar thing to like the critical discussion going through allows us to like focus in on points as they happen.
All right, it's very the lie actually gonna work. Oh, I put V on it rather than Virgil. I meant to put Virgil on it. That explains why it was still on Devil Trigger. None of that. Try hard not. Oops. Is there a model viewer in this game? Yeah, there is. Excellent. Let's take a look at some of the models real quick. Oops, there's Nero. This mod is called Ashen Order. Quite nice. The sword on his back is referred to as Devil Sword Nero. My preferred sword mod for Nero is still the Alistair one, but like this is a nice idea, and the specific color choice for it is green, which stands out when you actually use it. Of course, Dan saying they'll make right two outfit. So Ninja and I were discussing it when I did the Devil May Cry 5 stream originally. Neither was like the way Sparta looks in this game. I did end up finding a mod that makes Sparta look like we expected it to look, which is very much how it looked in Devil May Cry 1. Like without the bones and stuff, and I think it looks much nicer. Devil May Cry 2 Devil Trigger. And of course, Margin Devil Trigger. Or rather, Margin Devil Trigger. How you doing, Seek? I don't think this is actually Margin Devil Trigger. I think this is Margin Devil Trigger concept. Because one of the things with Marching Devil Trigger, if I remember rightly, is he had guns in his hands. This is blades in the arms, which are nicer. Oh, this one. The coloration on it is weird, but I do like the wing idea. Uh, v. Don't have him in this suit. Devil Trigger, regular Devil Trigger had the guns in that. Hmm. Um, Nico. Currently, mods on her are. What is goddamn deep? No glasses. Ponytail. Which might be Claire's ponytail from RE2 make. And Claire's Noir outfit. Though I think the heels might be different. That's why you would always shoot the same weapon in Devil Dream. That's fair enough. Lady in her Devil May Cry 4 outfit. Trish. This is referred to as Devil May Cry 1 with a jacket. It's the appearance she had in the anime, which is really nice. Like, the jacket, I think, is a really nice touch. And Virgil. Being suave and a nice button down shirt. She also added in a few concept art.
Alright, so let's actually listen to Bury the Light on the stream for once, shall we? Because I realised earlier today, I don't think we've ever done a virtual run with Bury the Light. Bury the Light's not working. Yeah, the the artwork gallery in Devil May Cry HD collection is really nice. They might have more in the specific Switch games. Because they weren't bundled together, you had to buy those separately. No, don't quit the game. We'll just play with uh, Devil's Never Cry. I'll have to reinstall the whole thing. Alright, thanks for joining us, Flame. Give yourself a good time, buddy, and we'll catch you later. Always appreciate being here, Flame. So instead of bury the light, devils never cry. Also, you probably couldn't see it earlier in the model viewer, but I also have a mod on that turns the Yamato into a straight sword. You would never notice it in gameplay. doing Clem. About three o'clock for you, you're just getting out of work. deleting emails, watching streams. The Beowulf Gauntlets looks so chunky in this game. Like, especially compared to Balrog and Gilgamesh. I did replicate it. I didn't think I could do that twice. Show me your opponent. Have you decided which one of you will die first? Hey. 
Oh, Clem, it might be of interest to you that Teak finally finished Dragon Quest VII last week. Which means tonight, his turn-based Tuesdays begins Final Fantasy VII. Oh, you've never seen the way Teak's gonna play it. That's Clem stealing my ideas. Doing my jokes. Yeah, Teak's got a bunch of mods set up on it, including the voice acting mod. Like that full voice acting mod they were working on for years. That actually came out. Oh, had that joke said, you lie. Yeah, it was finished a little while back. Give you credit for the idea. I need to work out who I'm going to be collaborating with next now that Gotham Knights is finished. Quite enough. It's great when we actually get to hear the music. So many of these fights end too soon. You sell something for the stream. This is a nice shirt. How you doing, Nelson? Had the timing off on it. Yeah, don't know if anybody saw it other than Flame. 
Uh, but I bought Shenmue 3 yesterday. With the possible idea that I might stream it in several years. No, that's the other uh, power up. Every hit you get with Beowulf can be charged. Or various effects. It's a risk versus reward kind of thing. Uh, it exists. It did exist in Devil May Cry 3. Like you can charge up every hit of a combo. a fun weapon to you. I think I do actually prefer it to Balrog. burn right through that. Yeah, Beowulf's a good weapon. I do kind of wish it had, like, a Stinger variant. Like, a move that takes you across the field a little bit more than this. But if necessary, Dark is always good for that. Oh cool, that doesn't drain right now. Oh yeah, it does. I think I'll get a chance to practice some of the moves in it. Show me your motivation. Yeah.
Virgil probably is overpowered in this. Especially with how fast he is. Ugh. Those guys are always a pain. guy is also just a pain. No regrets about Devil Trigger though. Sometimes you gotta step on bugs. Yeah. Alright, Goliath. Oh, that's kinda pointless now. I call that Whirly Blades of Death. Doesn't matter, can I keep up?
That looks almost stylish. You think you stand a chance? Cool town opportunity. You think you stand a chance? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think the previous games had mid air taunts. But they're like the easiest taunt opportunity. That look kind of stylish. Absolutely going to toot my own home there. Coming down. When there's a planet under, kill before a time, kill them all. Pass down the righteous law. There are justice that dwells in me. The lifeless corpse as far as the eye can see. And go for a little bit longer. That's actually a fair point as well, because we're not using the 2B mod right now. You also get to actually see Virgil's Devil Trigger. As opposed to, like, glowy 2B. Every now and again, this looks intentional. These guys are also a pain for actually maintaining concentration.
thought it was spammy bastards. I think I ended up ended on triple S's. I did, excellent. Getting to triple S in a fight is always nice. Ending a fight in triple S. Ruin my combo. Yes. Oh, great. Those guys. That one could have been like a lot better. All right, stage thirty.
Fun fact. Beowulf's jump is itself an attack. God damn it. That's an enemy I could definitely do a more practice on. Under two hours. Yeah, right. I think we're going to call it there. I won't be able to stream tomorrow. Thursday. Thursday I might be able to. We'll see. But then we'll be able to do something a little more substantial. Uh, but that's going to do it for us for today. I want to thank everybody for joining the stream. I always really appreciate the support. Big special thank you to everybody in chat. Chat is always the best part of the stream. Uh, Flame, Cat, Steak, Flame, Nelson. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and keeping company. Like I said, we'll hopefully be back on Thursday. If not, uh, weekend. I'm not certain about Friday. Hopefully Friday, but not certain yet. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go and raid Amber 92 who is currently playing Resident Evil Director's Cut in her attempts to do it in Node without taking any damage, which is something I mocked her a little bit for, and now she's actually trying to do it seriously. So, like, let's go um, make, a, make a bit of fun of her, but also support her in this endeavor. And with that, there's not really anything else to say, except thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic time of day. And... We'll catch you next time, guys. Bye.